you mentioned the cash you have, you said on Friday, it's something like 500 million, you intended yeah. to put some of that into the campaign. Now that the bond's been reduced, are you going to start putting money into your campaign? Yeah. You haven't done that since yeah. 2016. Well, first of all, it's none of your business, I mean, frankly. But uh, I, might, I might do that. I have the option. But if I have to spend 500 million on a bond, I wouldn't have that option. I'd have to start selling things. I don't have to sell anything. Okay, so it's absolutely none of your business, even though this is a press conference. It's where you go and you speak and then people ask you questions and it's talking about campaign finance, like you're a presidential candidate. It's kind of a big part of it. I don't know why that's not your business, particularly when you bear in mind that just a couple of days ago, he bleated this in all caps, through hard work, talent and luck, I currently have almost $500 million in cash, a substantial amount of which I intended to use in my campaign for president, blah, 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 conspiracy theories. So you already said three days ago that you're gonna use the money on your campaign. So why are you getting so mad at the reporter? Look, obviously he's mentally falling apart. He probably doesn't even remember that he all caps bleated that. But let's let him explain his train of somewhat thought in this. Why should I let a crooked judge make a decision to give $450 million? That allows me to spend very little money on my campaign if I so choose. I'll be spending money on my campaign. I might spend a lot of money on my campaign, but I should have that option. A crooked judge shouldn't say, we're gonna have you post a bond and take all of that money that I could be spending on a campaign or other things if I want to do other things. So we were gratified by the professionalism of the opinion today. I thought it was a very, I think it's a very important opinion for New York, but uh, the only thing that's going to really solve that problem is when I win, because you're going to have to win. Yeah, so look, I, I think that he really does believe that. Now it doesn't work in all cases as he thinks these civil judgments cannot I don't think simply go away because he becomes president. But many of his other uh, arguably larger legal challenges actually could disappear if he wins. And he's right, that's why his strategy, his legal strategy, when it comes to the stolen documents in January 6th and the hush money payments and all of that, uh, even Georgia, it's not I didn't break the law. It's could we wait for a little while? Could we wait for a week or a month or six months? Can we just get to the election? And then see what happens. That's why his legal defense looks the way it does. He's not lying there, he's being honest. He thinks that winning is all that matters. Now the rest of it is insane. And for regular people, it should boil your blood that he gets to talk about the legal judgment for the crimes that he has already been proven to have committed in that way. That why do I have to listen to a judge who says I should pay this when I should be spending it on my election or other things if I want to. Uh, because you stole that money, you stole that money through fraud, it's already been demonstrated. If you stole a car, could you get a press conference like that? Where you pitch it as like, how, how dare this crooked judge stop me? I should be able to take that $35,000 for that Hyundai and put it into Top Golf or something. Would you be able to do that? No, but the rich can. And there's theoretically a movement, the right wing populist movement that doesn't like that there's this two tiered system. But they're perfectly happy with what you saw there. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.